Okay, I think this is the last portion of my 802.1x dynamic VLAN assignment uh, validation test using the Brocade Mobility uh, controllers and access points. So now you're looking at the computer that's running the Radius server, and the Radius server that I'm using is something that's called uh, FreeRadius.net. So again, I apologize if this is not the same Radius server that you're normally using, like. Microsoft IAS or Cisco ACS or Steel Belt and Radius, Radius. But hopefully you'll see that what I'm doing here on my Radius server, you know how to do the same thing on your Radius server. So what I'm doing here right now on my Radius server is that I've created a, um, a user on this Radius server and the user's name is called TestVLAN20 and TestVLAN20 has a username and password password is also test VLAN 20 and this test VLAN 20 is assigned to VLAN 20 so that when this radius server uh, sees a user trying to authenticate using test VLAN 20 it will tell the wireless controller to assign or the wireless network to assign this user to VLAN 20 so uh, hopefully you know how to do that on your radio server. Now let me go over here to my wireless client and on my wireless client, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now create a new wireless profile that's called Dynamic VLAN Independent. And, and that's the same, S look here. that is the same SSID that we used when we created the WLAN in our controller, dynamic VLAN independent. So hopefully you remember that. We gave it the network authentication type is WPA2, the encryption is AES. Now let me move over here to the authentication tab and I'm gonna authenticate using PEEP. I'm gonna uncheck this and click on properties. I'm gonna remove some of these check boxes here. And again, if you've done 802.1x authentication before with a Windows supplicant, you will probably do the exact same thing you've always been doing and now I'm ready. So I've created my new SSID and I'm now ready to connect and use my user credentials that I just created on my radius server. So I click OK. Now if I go down here to my Windows icon, it is now telling me to select a certificate or credentials and this is where I'm going to enter my username test VLAN 20, test VLAN 20 for the password. Click OK. I'm going to wait for Windows. Okay, Windows didn't like it, so it's going to ask me to enter it again. That's fine. Test VLAN 20. Test VLAN 20. Click OK. And now it is waiting to connect. And then it gives me the pop-up saying that it is now connected. So now that it's connected, I'm going to open up the status window here. Let's see if you can see that okay. Status window, yes, the network name is Dynamic VLAN Independent. Good, that is the SSID I wanted it to connect to. If I go over to support, I see that the IP address was assigned by DHCP and received an IP address called 192.168.1.201. And I like this because I know that VLAN 20, if you're a member of VLAN 20, you will get an IP address in the 192.168 range. So I think that this has been, it worked. So this test VLAN 20 user got assigned to VLAN 20 and I know that based on the IP address that it was dynamically assigned. Now, let's make sure that this is really working by now creating a user on our radius server that will get assigned to VLAN 10. So this user that I just created was originally assigned to VLAN 20 and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to change the username instead of test VLAN 20 to now say test VLAN 10. I'm going to change the password to say 10 and on this radius server this is how you tell it to assign this user to VLAN 10 by changing this parameter to 10. I'm going to save the changes and then on my radius server, it tells me that anytime I make changes to these files, I need to restart the radius server. That's what I'm doing here. Good. Now I'm going to go back over to my Windows client here. All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to force it to repair this connection. I know there's nothing wrong with this connection, but I'm going to force it to repair, which will bounce the connection and go through the authentication process again, where I'm going to try the new username and password I just created to get it assigned to VLAN 10. So let's let it bounce. 
and then it will hopefully tell me to enter my username and password credentials. Let's give it a second here. Okay, there it is. I'm going to click on this bubble. I'm going to enter now. Test VLAN 10. Test VLAN 10. Click OK. And the bubble tells me I am successfully connected. And I'm going to now click on this to get more information. And yes, good. The network is the same network, dynamic VLAN independent. I'm going to click on support. And look, now the IP address, which is still assigned by DHP, is not in the 192.168. Instead, it's a 10.10.10 .10 address, which I know if you're a member of VLAN 10, the, the DHCP server that's connected to VLAN 10 is going to give you an address in the 10.10.10 .10 range. So, same SSID, different username, different dynamic assignment of the VLAN. So, the dynamic VLAN assignment uh, feature is working. It is working. Let me go back over here, open up my browser for the RFS 7000. It is working. Even if you click on independent mode, right? So hopefully this is enough to show you how to get it up and running on your network. Thank you.